Oh boy. Bright lights. It's going to make fab so affordable, right? Yeah, no. So I don't quite understand this. Uh, sorry, the title, I guess, is a little bit clickbaity. But for the past week or so, right, this has really been the, the, the flavor of the week, if you will, the topic that people are presenting, how bright lights is just going to take flesh and blood to this new affordable level, which to me is is a bit crazy because fab is already considerably cheap, is it not, right? Even if boxes were at their MSRP, it would still be probably one of the cheapest games per pack out there at, at this point in time, right? Especially if you compare it to the heavy hitters like Pokemon, like uh, Magic. So not indie, but more mainstream. And then even here in Australia, right? Boxes consistently sit at around $40 below MSRP. I think uh, 160 is the MSRP. You can usually find loose boxes for about 120 and cases you're looking at anywhere from say 100 to 115 AUD, remember? So, you know, they come in right under the $80 mark if you compare it to USD and our taxes are included in those advertised prices. So Flesh and Blood is insanely cheap. It has been insanely cheap probably from the get-go. The only real choke point, if you will, has been the legendaries and the staple generics, which Legendary Studios have been dealing with through other means, right? Bright Lights isn't going to do anything new. If anything, a Dust Till Dawn was the, the real big, we finalized the pull rates. We've got them nice to where the legendaries sit at the price we want, right? Not saying that Uprising, Dynasty, or Atsia just didn't do that because they did. But Dust Till Dawn is definitely, you know, if you were going to say the set that made the game cheaper, I would say Dust Till Dawn in its randomization and its pull rates definitely make the game feel a lot cheaper. Now you have the other avenues, which I don't know why I got off the article, right? Because that's what we're going to talk about. I think I was looking for the pull rates for Dust of Dawn. But of course we have the expansion slot offering up reprints, right? And then this whole Ferrandel Spring Tune is probably the main center for this argument that Bright Lights is going to make flesh and blood cheaper. And of course, then you also crack shuffle play, right? The ability to now use less packs, if you will, to play limited formats, right? And all all around just streamline the digestion and the play components of flesh and blood, which is good. But again, I, I wouldn't say it's changing how cheap it is, right? Because again, flesh and blood to me has consistently been cheap. Now, circling back to the expansion slot, right? So again, this is probably the, the main reason why people are touting, you know, right lights are gonna make things cheap. Uh, face value, a spring tunic at one in 15. <laughs> If that, because again, we don't know the actual pool size, which then affects the overall pool rate. We don't know if these are all equivalents or anything like that. There's all these hidden loopholes that we might miss or might see, as well as the other cards that are gonna be reprinted. And altogether, I, I don't think they're going to be insanely cheap, right? Reprints of, of Spring Tunic, getting the history pack, which is readily available, still being printed, hasn't considerably tanked the prices, has it? Now, I would expect these to be cheaper, again, if they balance pool rates, but I, I'm going to circle back to the legendaries since Fab 2.0, right? They have been more accessible and more affordable than the previous block. And altogether, I think we are at the point where, where legendary studios have fine-tuned pull rates. That's, again, Bright Lights isn't, isn't necessarily something new. It's not going to shake things up because there is nothing really to shake up. Now, I, I don't want to spend the whole video on this since, again, I don't think there's a lot of worth in discussing Fab being cheaper because it is still pretty cheap. Uh, yes, there's there's the few outliers that we mentioned. And again, I personally, I think we've been corrected. I think they were on the path to be corrected for a while. And again, Dust Till Dawn is that big moment. The the variation in Dust Till Dawn when it comes to pulling legendaries, uh, the ability to go out, buy single packs, single boxes, and feel good spending smaller amounts on Fab, right, is, is way better than Dust Till Dawn. And I would fully see that going forward with future sets. I doubt they reset to all the pull rates or anything or adjust for that. I think, again, if we're gonna tout a set for, for being the cornerstone of making fab cheaper, Dust Till Dawn is it for me, not, it's not gonna be bright lights. But again, for the expansion slot. So to just break it down further, here's the thing, one in 15, again, sounds great. If, it, if you can get a Shunik, one in 15, then of course it's going to be affordable. The issue is that we don't know how many cards will occupy the expansion slot across the three different tiers. And we also don't know what the, the slot's approximate value will be, for instance, right? So you might not pull a tunic, you might pull a law card or a tournament card, if you will. Are they going to be equivalent? Are you going to be able to trade them in or even get close 
to a tunic. Right, we, we don't know. To me, the law cards, unless they're these super chase artistic style cards, which are one in 15, I doubt it. I don't expect them to be super valuable. I expect them to be a nice little sort of fan card, right? If you get one, awesome, you'll, you'll treasure it, but you, most people won't go out of the way, right? What comes to mind is the art cards from MTG. Uh, as for the playables, yes, they could be closer to legendaries. Again, that in itself has to be a really fine tuned thing because they can't just print a auto include, you know, for X class in this slot. That would be really bad because again, how, how are you going to get enough of these cards out to the world? If they're all say legendary specializations, fine, that's fine. Cause they have the, the least demand, if you will, because you only need one and they can only be played for X euro. But if it is, you know, the new, new horizons, if you will, but as a class card for Ranger, right? Having it in this slot, at 1 in 15 to find three to fully play with. That is gonna be a nightmare. And then overall, again, it depends on, you know, what treatment are these cards getting? Uh, how many cards are actually in the card pool? So how many do you have to cycle through to get to the expensive cards, right? So again, using the, the spring tunic, the spring tunic, you either have to find one or you have to find cards equivalent to one for it to actually come down in price. Do you get that sort of mentality, right? So I either need to be able to trade in to a spring tunic from equivalent cards of the slots, right? Think of that in terms of, of normal legendaries or the Marvel cards, if you will. Some, yes, you have to trade up, some you trade down, but altogether they're around one another so that you can convert easily from one of them into the actual card you want from the pool. So depending on the cards in the slot, again, we don't know how that's going to actually work out, right? If they do spring tunic, if they do command and conquer, already you need three command and conquers to one spring tunic. And there's all these other variables in this slot that again, I, I can't say either way, if it's going to really impact how affordable playing Flesh and Blood is, especially in terms of, of meta decks. And then it's it's probably also worth asking or posing the question, how many high value cards do you think they will actually tackle? You know, again, we're talking if there's say 10 cards per slot, right? So you have to cycle through 30 cards at one in 15 to find your tuning, right? That's already somewhat of an issue but how many expensive cards are they actually going to pick? The only two that really come to mind because the crown just got tackled in uh, Dust of Dawn is obviously the Tunic and New Horizons. I think they're, they're the top two cards still, right? If memory serves me correct. And I wouldn't expect them to touch New Horizons, right? They've already uh, nerfed Ranger to an extent and New Horizons is meant to come in the next history pack. So why, why print it here? That's, that's my rationale. So yeah, overall, I just, I don't, I don't think bright lights is this bright light, right? When it comes to the affordability of flesh and blood, I think saying that, you know, this is going to shake things up. This is going to be such an affordable set and, and the new baseline for flesh and blood is sort of a disservice, if you will, to flesh and blood as a whole, because it is, especially compared to everything else, a cheap game. Yes, at the top level, right? There are expensive cards. There are cards that do need to be tackled and brought down a peg, which they are handling, but they were handling them even before Bright Lights, right? So Bright Lights, again, isn't anything new in terms of affordability for me. Uh, it's it's debatable how much of an impact the expansion slot is going to have, depending on, again, how many cards you have to cycle through, how many cards are actually in the pool, how many cards are valued you know, in X range versus cheap. There's just so many variables for this slot that I don't think it's it's worth saying this is going to make the game cheaper. But then, of course, we do have the crack shovel play mechanic, right? Which does seem to, again, I wouldn't say affordability. I would say this is streamlining the, the play experience, right? It's making events easier to run. It's making, you know, going out, buy a box, play a weekend with your friends, uh, super easy, right? It's just making it more streamlined and more player friendly right, not player affordable, because again, to me, Flesh and Blood is highly affordable. No box, no set has come out and sat at the MSRP, right? Either either that means that the MSRP from Legend Story Studios is too high, or again, they you, a store sells enough volume, right, to be okay with taking a loss or not making as big of a profit as what they would like. The last thing that you could touch on, right, so four boost packs are the play now, right? Instead of six, uh, and then draft is, is three instead of, was it four, I wanna say? I think it was four, uh, but altogether, 
right? Events are not changing, okay? So there's still the entry fee, right? Is still equivalent across all the different uh, events, right? So Dust or Dawn, War of Monarch is the same. Uh, Outsiders, still the same, right? You're still getting the six packs, okay? They're not cutting down, they're not running uh, more players, which I don't, I don't know about that, right? I mean, you could take, you know, five bucks off, cut down to four. Uh, oh, I, I suppose people would feel a bit differently about that. And again, tweaking it in some way, you know, to keep players happy is a whole nother question, but altogether, right? Events are not coming, are not becoming cheaper. The entry price is still the same. You're still getting the same amount of packs. You just get uh, participation boosters, if you will, right? So instead of having six for sealed, you now only have four and you get two freebies, if you will, but you're still paying the same amount, okay? So running events, uh, participating in events, going to events, it's not more affordable, it's equivalent. Again, across the board, Flesh and Blood is still equivalent. But again, that is not to say Flesh and Blood is expensive. Legendaries, we've talked about before. Uh, yes, some, but overall, Legendary Studios have been working on that for a while, right? Bright Lights is nothing new, and Flesh and Blood altogether, for beginner to mid-level, insanely affordable, uh, mid-level to high-level, right? Then you start dabbling in class specific legendaries and more highly priced cards. And of course, you know, meta relevant, there's there's a case for it still being expensive, but altogether, Flesh and Blood is not an expensive card game, right? To, to enjoy, to participate in, and to be part of the community, right? Doesn't need the whole tagline, it's gonna be the more affordable. It's already affordable. Hope you enjoyed.